What if Call of Duty was medieval? Instead of guns, rocket launchers, jetpacks, and bombs, they had bows, swords, and battle axes. It would be so much better and everyone can agree. I even asked my best friend on their opinion of my idea, and as you can tell, it's going to be the best game ever. Okay, maybe not, but give me a chance. I could totally make a better game than Activision all by myself and in just a month. Enough talking, let me start to make this absolute masterpiece. I hopped into Unity, threw in a bean with some sunglasses, and uh, that was a lot of work, so I called it a day and went to bed. After a good night of rest, I opened up my game to find out it was not looking medieval at all. I began to lose all motivation. I thought the medieval fairy would make my game overnight. I once dreamt of making medieval Call of Duty, and now I'll have to keep dreaming because I quit. Just kidding. In reality, I began to make the movement and the camera look. For some reason, I always mess up something on the movement, even though I've been making games for some time now. So I had to watch this one tutorial on YouTube for the 83rd time because I keep forgetting how to do it. They call me El Stupido. I've only started on a movement and I'm already 3 headaches in so wish me luck. This game is also going to be online so that just makes the game 50 times more difficult to make. Out of terror, I began to set up the networking basics and to my surprise, something went wrong. The game was broken. Players can control their player, but also every other player. This is when I figured out about client authorization. Basically, it's authorization before the client, so that way, each player will be able to move themselves. After some coding and frantically looking through Stack Overflow for answers to my problems, it was working as expected and there were definitely not any bugs. I took a break from all the agony and began to work on something else. For my game, it would definitely be a good idea if there were a lobby so that the players can actually join and play with others. I chose to go with Unity's lobby service and I watched some tutorials to learn what the hell I was looking at. Surprisingly, it was actually pretty simple. It only took three headbangs on my keyboard for me to miraculously write something that works. I'm so proud of myself that I was able to get this simple lobby up and running in only 9 hours and 37 minutes. After making a lobby, I thought what a good time it would be to work on the sword model for the game. There definitely weren't any bugs that needed to be fixed first. After tracing the sword reference image to the best of my abilities, I threw it into my beans and sunglasses game and bam. You can't even see the other player's sword. Nice. After a bit though, I was able to make the sword visible to all players and was sinking across everyone nicely. I began to get tired of these beans and sunglasses so I decided it needed to change right now. I went off to make a 3D model for the player, gave the dude some bones, and hooked him up with a running animation. I had an idea that each class should have a different helmet, so I made some more models but with different helmets. There are going to be 4 different classes, the knight, archer, heavy, and wizard. At this point, I only had a sword model for the game, so I made a bow model for the archer, and I made some logic so that the player can pull the bow back. I thought it would be brilliant if the bow actually shot an arrow instead of just pulling the string back, so I added an arrow, but it didn't work yet, because of course, I haven't struggled in a while, so I had to now. Being a game dev is always so much fun. I kept trying to fix the arrow not having any physics, but it just felt like I was getting farther and farther from the solution. Eventually, I figured out that the issue was that there is a delay from the server to the client. Basically, the structure of most online games like Call of Duty is that there is some kind of authoritative server. It's like this to make cheating more difficult. So if you're the host, you spawn the arrows instantly, but for all clients, you would have to notify the server to spawn the arrow at their location, and communications aren't instant, so there was the delay. I fixed this issue by just spawning the arrow locally on all players. So when one player wants to fire an arrow, they would just tell the server that they fired the arrow, and then the server will tell all clients about the arrow being fired. This means that the arrow isn't actually synced between all players because physics would be calculated slightly different on each computer. But I figured that there wouldn't be an issue with this because the arrow is just going through the air, so the physics will most likely be the same 99.9% .9 of the time. Enough with that conundrum, I wanted to make the wand for the wizard guy. So I looked at this uh, reference and pretty much just copied it entirely. So yeah, now there's the wizard with his wand, but all he could do right now is just look at it. I kind of want the wand to actually do something, so I made a quick attack animation and I made it shoot these magical spells. You could tell that I didn't know what to do for the spells, so it was just the purple cubes for now. There's also going to be a heavy in my game, so I made a battle axe. And yeah, not much to say there, it's pretty battle axey. This is when I realized all was going well and I was actually making medieval Call of Duty. To make sure that I wasn't just wasting all my time, I exported the game to test it and yeah, it didn't work. It looked like there was a bug or two. After painfully watching YouTube videos and scouring the internet for solutions, I was able to make the game work, but apparently the sun was missing because everything was dark. Originally, I thought it would be a good idea to have a system where after every death, you choose your class. But not only was this difficult to implement, I was also thinking that people would just keep picking the same class over and over again, so I just went with randomizing the class you get after every death. I think randomization is better anyway, but let me know what you think in the comments. So now the main part of the game is coming together. The players can kill each other with swords, arrows, battle axes, and magic. I decided I was done looking at this boring scene, so I added some post-processing and boosted the color. This makes the game look 10 times better already. And yeah, I got rid of the purple cube magic and instead made the wand shoot some particles. The cube is still there, but it is invisible. 
I wanted to begin working on the map for the game. I decided I wanted a village map and I began to look at some references for medieval village houses. I then proceeded to try to copy this house model because god forbid I pay $5 to get it. Now nah, I gotta make it myself. So I spent the next hour or so trying to make this house but I didn't like the outcome. I took a step back and tried to make something a bit easier, which is a fence model. Surprisingly, this was pretty easy and it must have been because I just followed a video step by step, but yeah, now I have a fence. I also imported some tree and rock models that I had lying around and that should be good for now. I realized that the knight should also have a shield to go with the sword and I debated adding the shield because I was being lazy, but I decided that it would be a good feature to be able to block attacks, so I went into Blender and made a shield model for the game and made it able to hold in front of the player to block. This was all a nice temporary distraction from the fact that I had to make an actual house model now since I want this map to be a village. I went into Blender with a new reference image and with my background experience of 25 years in architecture. I took my time because I knew that this house had to be made for my game to be good because you know what they say, if you don't have a medieval village house in your game, then your game sucks. Alright, maybe no one says that, but I need it for my game. For the house, I pretty much just made one fourth of it and then mirrored it to the other sides. I had some details and I was pretty happy with how it turned out so I added the house into Unity and yeah it looks pretty medieval. I also made another house because I like to suffer. Nah, I had to make another house because it wouldn't really look great if there was just one house copy and pasted around the map. I did the same thing for this house, making only one fourth of it and then mirroring it to the other sides. The last main model I made for the village was a watchtower. I thought that this would be a good thing to have since players would be able to climb up and then use the height to their advantage. But I didn't want to make it too overpowered, so I put planks on two sides of the tower, restricting the places that the archer and the wizard can shoot from. I also couldn't make up my mind about what color roof to put on the watchtower, should it be the brown or the red. I ended up choosing the red, but let me know what you think in the comments. Some small models that I made were a couple tree models and the spiky fence model. I planned to outline the map with the spiky fences as the boundary that marks the end of the map. I also added a toon shader that I found on the Unity Asset Store. It adds hard shadows and an outline to make the game pop more and look cartoony. I don't know how it works, but yeah, it just does. A big part of the game that I've not told you until now is that there will be unique abilities for each class. There will be a meter that levels up on each kill and when it is full you can use the ability. The knight will be able to activate super speed while reducing his attack rate. The archer will be able to see through walls, the heavy will be able to rage, and the wizard will be able to shoot a fireball. All the abilities will last 15 seconds. It was not easy to make these abilities though. It took about a week and tons of spaghetti code to make them work as expected. Then I made a bunch of little things like showing the amount of damage that you do and adding a game stats UI that would show the amount of kills and deaths each player has in the game. I also made a kill feed. Now I was scared. I realized it's time to design a map. And if you've ever tried designing an FPS map that is both fun and balanced, you know the struggle. First, I watched some videos to try to get an idea what a good map looks like. Then I asked my best friend to see if they had any good map design tips. I tried to sketch a map design out on paper and uh, yeah, I didn't really like it that much. I skipped the paper design and made some hills so that the map isn't just flat everywhere. I also added a bunch of fences around the map for cover. The shape of the map is more like a crescent than a circle because I don't want the map to feel too linear. I decided to make the overall design of the map to be more realistic instead of a 3 laner because I thought it would be better for my game since it's going to be a free for all. Your game can't be medieval without a crate, mushroom, and some logs they said. Nah, I just needed some filler models to spice up the map a bit. I had to painly place fence eye around the map so that the players can't jump on hills and I was almost done when I realized I didn't change the collider to be taller so the player could still jump over the fences and I had to redo the entire tedious process. Next, I added a jetpack into my medieval game because obviously they had jetpacks back then. It's not a bug, it's a feature, trust me. After fixing that, this is what the game currently looks like. I set up the spawns because, yeah, do I have to explain why? I have set up the spawning locations inside of my medieval Call of Duty free-for-all game so that the players can spawn at one of the spawning locations. There you go. This is what the final map looks like, and all that happened so quick, but trust me, the map design process took a lot longer than those couple clips I showed. Now I wanted to make the main menu look like it wasn't made by a toddler. I pretty much just copied over the entire game scene and put some UI on it. I chose to go with orange, blue, and white as the colors for the game because they look pretty nice together. This is what the lobby looks like now. I chose to name the game, um, uh, game name? Yeah, I didn't have a name at the time. I also added a knight in the background and he kinda just stands there right now but I'll change that later. When I say later I mean right now because I've changed my mind and I don't like the knight just standing there frozen. I've added the rest of the classes into the scene and began to give them all animations and make them move around a little. I made the end of the game menu that shows who won the game and all the player stats. I also added all of the sounds because the game didn't have any sound until now. I just got all my sounds like sword attacking on free sound. 
If you want to play the game right now or if you're interested in me becoming your video editor, check out the links in the description. I couldn't figure out how to set up host migration, so if you do play, I recommend that you play with people that you know won't disconnect throughout the game. There also might be some bugs, so if you find any, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, then there's a 100% chance that you like one of the videos that is on screen now. Click on one of them, and thanks for watching.